Since the Beta 7 release of the Flucoma Max package, we've made some significant changes to how buffers are dealt with and managed in any object that processes um, buffers as inputs and outputs in the Flucoma universe. Um, this is important because the changes are breaking, as in they will break all old patches from this point onwards. And as well, they, there's new features that we'd like for you to try um, experiment with and give us feedback on. So in a pretty typical example, we might process this source buffer here. And we're going to say process or analyze source and put the MFCC values into a buffer called MFCC. Um, we would expect that when we do that, we get some values. We trigger that process with a bang and we get a bang when we finish. If we want to do another process afterwards, say calculate the stats on those MFCC values, say source MFCC, stats goes to a buffer called stats. Now this still works, uh, but it's based on the assumption that a bang comes out of here and triggers the next object below it. These objects or the buffer processes no longer output a bang. They instead output a new special message, buffer, and then the name of the buffer that they output the results of the processing to. And we'll see why this construct exists pretty soon. Um, so it can get a little tedious having to always make these intermediate buffers. So now there's a new capability. If you specify the source and you bang, you now get the word buffer as we did over here. But instead of pointing towards a buffer that we made, buff MFCC will put its results into a new automatically generated buffer that exists invisible to the patch. It's actually inside this object and is contained to this particular instance of the object. So if I just used an info object here, I could say something like set to the buffer reference here and then bang. And we should see that we get 13 channels, which is right, 13 MFCC coefficients. So that's one part of the puzzle. All of the buffer processing objects now as well take a new message called buffer. So if I remove the source here, and I say buffer source. It's as if I typed at source source into the box and then did a bang. So buffer is like set my source and then, and then trigger processing. And we see here it's used this invisible internal automatically managed buffer. And it's told us that it processed and then put the output uh, results into that buffer. And it gives us the reference. With these two things in mind, we can chain together buffer processes to simplify the amount of buffers that we manually have to concoct. So this process here could actually be reimagined or simplified to just this. And what this does, just to outline the steps very clearly, when we bang this object, it says process source, but there's no output. And so it uses the internal buffer here. This message then goes to fluid buff stats over this cable here. Because it's the buffer message, it says to the object or it indicates to the object, you need to process this as your source. And because we haven't specified an output, we get another buffer passed along. So if you've ever used Jitter, it's a bit like that. 
Um, and we can use all of the other objects like I did before. We can use info. As long as we just programmatically parse this message, we can tap into the data as normal. We just don't see it in the patch anymore. And we don't have to deal with the name, uh, making sure that it's named correctly, putting all the arguments in the box. So it's important to remember um, a few things about this. Um, if you were depending on your patch, let's say we did something like this. Um, let's say we had a patch that did this. So we're going to process, we're going to do some loudness analysis. I'm going to put in a buffer called loudness. In the old world, pre-beta 7, a bang would have come out of here and then told buff MFCC to process source, put the result in features. A bang would have come out and told buff stats to process MFCC and then process the, the data and put the results into a buffer called stats. But, because we now have this buffer message being emitted, buffer loudness, this would actually change the source here from source to loudness. So if you send the buffer message, it actually overrides any attributes in the box. So if you need a patch to work like this, there's a few things that you can do. Um, well, actually, just to, just to be clear, what would happen here is buff loudness would put the uh, loudness features into this buffer. But then we would calculate the MFCCs of the loudness values rather than the audio in the source. So I think if we have a look here, it will look quite weird. And then the stats will be even weirder. To mitigate this, you can simply place a bang between each of the chained objects if you don't want to modify your patch too much. Um, think what will have happened is my source will have changed. Yes, so if I remake the objects, there we go, we have some MOCC looking values. And the stats look more sane. So you can do that. Um, alternatively, you could refactor some of your code. So we could make this like this. So we would kind of branch like so. And we could get rid of this bang. And that would, that would work completely fine. Uh, because now we've decoupled the loudness uh, processing here from the MFCC. And that value, or rather this, this message is no longer passed to MFCC. So this is a new system that we envisage will make um, patching easier for people who know exactly what they want. Um, they don't want to deal with buffers. They have a lot of intermediate buffers that they just want to remove from the patch and keep things simple. The principle of automatic management, in fact, I'll keep this back, also applies to data sets. So if I do some processing here. In fact, I won't need that. I'll close this, open a new patch. And we'll get Nicole. Cool. I'm going to take buff MFCC and set the source to source. Remember now we get the output is this internal invisible buffer that is automatically managed for us. Uh, I'm going to create a data set called data. And I'm just going to construct this from the buffer that comes out of here. And then print so we can see it. So we have sort of a data set of arbitrary values. Um, if we wanted to, for example, normalize this data, and then dimension reduce it. 
and then normalize those results. Previously, before beta 7, you would call fit transform data and then maybe something like normalized. Oops. And then we would create another data set called normalized. And if we sent this message, we would get something out of the right outlet here. So the first change is that left uh, and right outlets now do different things for all of the data processing Flucoma objects. Um, messages that deal with transforming or querying data come out of the left outlet. And we get a similar sort of message to the buffer message. It tells us what it did. Um, and it tells us where the output is. So in this case, it's normalized. Um, if we remove the output, it makes an output for us, or rather it uses the internal one here that's invisible in the patch. Um, the fit transform message can be passed along. So if I just go back quickly to the previous way of doing things, we would say, Fit data normalized, normalized to reduction, something like that. And the data set doesn't exist, that's right, because uh, reduction. And this comes out of the left outlet now. So now we have some UMAP output. Um, we've had to make a data set at each stage. However, much like the new buffer interface, we can use these messages here to completely remove intermediate data sets. And so, what you might see in some places in the documentation is the refer message. So that reference there that we get can be used to refer a data set to it if we need to go and look at the data. If I now print this, we have the UMAP data in this data set, but we never actually created the output. And that's really handy because we can chain together many, many different things and just connect the left outlet as we go down. We could normalize and then standardize and then robust scale and then uh, multi-dimensional scale. And if we do things like that, it will take a while. But ultimately, we don't need to deal with data sets, which is really, really uh, relieving. <laughs> and there we go. So this um, is another um, alternative interface that we've, we've made, which unfortunately breaks old patches, um, particularly because of the outlet change. Um, but it should offer new possibilities for patching that make things much simpler. Um, you can, of course, mix and match different things as well. So if I go back to the buffer example, um, oh, we already have that buffer somewhere, don't we? So I'll do this. We can say source, um, what was it called? Source features goes to a buffer called MFCC. We can then say fluid buff stats, where we don't provide an input or an output, and then we flatten. And then we say at destination flat. And so you have the flexibility of defining manual outputs where you need to. I don't really care about what happens in this stats buffer. I know what it's going to do. I know that the data is right. 
Um, but I will need to then maybe access this flat buffer more easily by name. So I create it and deal with it that way. Could of course get rid of it and it will use the internal buffer. So that's it. And I hope these changes make your patching easier and uh, more fruitful for your creative exploration. Any questions about this new interface can be directed towards the discourse where we're happy to um, help you fix some old patches, perhaps plan some new ones, um, or just try and understand and learn how this new system works. <laughs>